Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here for a new PB&J video. And today I will be doing some more brush stroke stamping with some of our new Christmas stamps. So here is the look at the card that we will be creating today. This is a one layer card and it is sized five by seven. And the featured stamp on this card is a stunning brush stroke stamp called 40-797 Merriest. So to begin, I am stamping using the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool. I am stamping onto Bristol Smooth Paper. This paper makes a really big difference in capturing the details of this stunning stamp. I am inking it using a Ranger Archival Ink Pad. This is a mini sized ink pad, which allows me to really sort of turn it on its side and get it onto the places that I want that specific color. So right now I am just putting that onto the main sort of leaf sections of this branch. I am not worried about the berries, so if I get some of it onto the berries when I stamp, that is okay. Because this is a pretty light color of green. Now I'm going to add um, a little different shade of green to more of the sort of pine needle type leaves or <laughs> branches and sort of more of a bluish green here and all of the exact colors of inks that I'm using um, within the video today will be listed down in the YouTube description box below and I will also list and link the Penny Black products that I'm using for this specific card down in that YouTube description box below. So here I'm just layering on a little bit more color I'm not extending it all the way to the edge of it, those pine needles, so keeping it more towards the base or near the stem. And you can see you can instantly get shading and blending by doing that. So you can get the look of layered stamping, but only have to use one stamp. You don't have to be switching things back and forth. You just keep it right in your stamp positioning tool and layer up your colors like I've done starting with the light and the dark and sort of moving them in closer and closer towards the stem. For fine precision areas where you can't get an ink pad on there, now I'm going to use my Arteza Twi Markers. These have a very fine tip on one edge and then a brush tip on the other that works really well on the stamps. And so I'm using that brush tip here to color in, I guess I call them the stems, <laughs> um, and get that color on there. I can do more than one inking and stamping. Now you could also color your whole stamp. Um, I would do it color by color with markers like this and stamp it. You could even lightly mist it with water before you stamp it, and that would give you more of a loose watercolor look. This stamp has quite a few details though, which is why um, I didn't want to do any misting with this personally. Here I'm going to use a red to color in the berries, and you'll see the green that was stamped was so light that it was perfectly fine to um, then put that red on top. So that might be something with this particular stamp. Um, when you ink it up, if you're using an ink pad, you may want to use a lighter green for those leaves towards the center that are near the berries. That way you don't have to worry about the berries later on. Now I'm also going to take my marker and add some shading to some of these leaves. So looking right at the stamp, I'm just coloring on it with the marker in the areas that I want to be darker. So just like if I was coloring the image in on the paper, I'm putting the, the marker in the same places, but instead of doing it on the paper, I'm just doing it right on the stamp. So for me, the benefit of stamping any large areas with an ink pad is it's either easier to get even coverage with an ink pad than it is with a marker. So I like to start with a pretty even layer with the ink pad if I can, and then go back in and just add touches of shading with the marker later on. Now I've taken this out of 
my MISTI stamp positioning tool and then along the edges I have added some painters tape. Now I did sort of daub off that painters tape on my sweater so it wasn't too sticky um, so I can remove it once I've done the inking but this just creates a masked border around the edge. It's my favorite way to finish off the um, these type of cards. It also makes for a great one layer card that's easy to send. So I added a little bit of a light, um, I believe it's Viridian from Archival um, Inks with an ink blending tool and a foam pad and now some rich cocoa from Memento Ink. And again those exact colors will be listed down in the YouTube description box below. I'm just adding this um, brown at the very edges of those corners. And then I'm going to add a little bit of library green. I love this color. It's really nice for Christmas. It's a Ranger Archival ink. So starting off of the edge, sort of on that tape area, working in a circular motion and moving it in. Next is my favorite part, removing the tape. <laughs> I just love once I do that and it feels like a big ta-da once the ink or the tape is removed. So for one final step, which you certainly could skip this step. So if you don't like to paint, you don't have to do this step. I love to paint and shade and just keep fiddling away <laughs> with my cards. So I'm going to add just a little bit more shading onto some of these leaves. I'm using Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. And you can see I'm just painting on top. I'm using the stamp as a guide. So these brush stroke stamps are going to kind of tell you um, where you should stamp that. This ink is um, mostly transparent so I'm still going to be able to see that um, texture that's a part of the stamp showing through. I love that. And I'm just going to add some extra blending. For me this just makes it look even more painterly um, like a hand uh, painted more than it looks stamped which is kind of a fun look to go for. It feels very artsy and fun. I'm just going to go in and shade those. Now the places where I stamped using the marker ink, that marker ink is water soluble. So that is going to sort of blend with the color that I'm putting on top of it. But that base layer of that light green is not going to blend at all because the archival inks are waterproof. So any type of water coloring on top is not going to blend. I'm also going to use some Arteza gouache paint in a very fine um, paintbrush <laughs> and just paint on sort of in a sketchy way following the stamp as a guide but it does not need to be perfect some of these details just adding in some darkness and more detail to this again you can totally skip this step um, but I find it fun and enjoy just adding some extra details some extra um, shading to each part of the stamp I like using the gouache paint for this because it is very, uh, more opaque and I like the mix of some opaque areas of painting with the more transparent look of the um, Distress Ink Reinkers used as watercolors. Here I'm using some Arteza gouache paint in red. Now, like I said, this gouache paint is more opaque. so. And if any areas of these berries looked a little dark to me because they had some of that green ink on them, this is opaque, so it's going to just brighten them up. Now to finish off this card, I stamped a sentiment from one of my favorite sentiment sets from this Christmas release. This is 30-871 Light of Christmas. And I just added that up near the top, kept things very simple. And here is a look at that finished card one layer ready to put in the mail. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that it has you inspired. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. That lets us know that you'd like to see more videos. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, as well as Instagram, our website, and our blog. And I will link all of those for you down in the YouTube description box. Thanks for watching and happy stamping.